So we have been closely watching this developing story coming from special counsel Robert Mueller's probe into Russian meddling in our last election. Rick Gates has now pleaded guilty to conspiracy and false statement charges. And Mueller is also now accusing Manafort of secretly paying former European politicians to lobby on behalf of Ukraine. Former Trump campaign Chairman Paul Manafort and his deputy Gates were indicted for a second time on these new charges of tax evasion and bank fraud. The move could increase pressure on both to now cooperate with the investigation. Manafort and Gates were both accused of, in October of laundering millions of dollars earned while acting as unregistered agents of the Ukrainian government. Meanwhile, Manafort maintains his innocence. He says in a statement that Gates' plea does not change his commitment to defend himself against what he calls untrue piled up charges. Manafort also says that he hoped and expected that Gates would have the strength to continue the trial. He says Gates chose to plead guilty for reasons yet to surface. Hmm. Let's bring in Larry Kalaman. He's a former federal prosecutor and the founder of Freedom Watch. Larry, with Gates set to fully cooperate, if you are Paul Manafort or his lawyer, how concerned are you? Well, I would be concerned. Obviously, Gates had to give something to get a plea. We don't know exactly what the plea was. Actually, I was down at the courthouse today in Washington, D.C., all kinds of cameras, newsmen, everything else. They were trying to find out what was going on as well. But the bottom line here is, is that Mueller, the special counsel, doesn't have authority to either have indicted Mueller or, excuse me, indicted Manafort or Gates. He exceeded his authority. These are alleged crimes that occurred well before these individuals started to work on the Trump presidential campaign. There is a lawsuit pending on that behalf. Uh, we are seeking to intervene on behalf of Freedom Watch and the public interest. And there is a chance this could be knocked out. The whole thing may, frankly, go down the drain for Robert Mueller. Well, we'll see about that. And I wanted to ask you uh, a follow-up question. You mentioned that all media was down there at the courthouse today wondering what was going on. Well, they seem to know a lot, at least if you read this column from Daily Beast columnist Margaret Colson. She says, it is an injustice if once again those around the president suffer and he is left unscathed. She said the president was the beneficiary of the highly questionable Russian contacts his campaign made and then desperately tried to keep a secret leading up to the 2016 election, which speaks of collusion. And much worse. Those are her words. Now, the press seems to have a lot more evidence of collusion than Robert Mueller does. John, that's wishful thinking on her part. Uh, Margaret Carlson is writing for the Daily Beast. That's an ultra leftist publication. They want to try to get the Mueller investigation going in that direction. But there's no evidence that the president engaged in bribery of any kind. This is a trumped up investigation, no pun intended to smear the president, even destroy him before they even consider whether to indict him or to send an impeachment report to Congress. And that's the criminality of Robert Mueller. It's why, you know, I have up on our website at freedomwatchusa.org a petition to have me named special counsel because the special counsel Mueller should be investigated. And because he's leaked grand jury information, he perhaps should be prosecuted himself for violating the law. We don't know it's, if it's him or if it's some of these folks who are inside these uh, interviews. You know, we don't know how this information is getting out, but you're right, Larry, it should not be getting out. That's a concern. Well, right, because the president's being smeared and destroyed, and the American voter who voted for him is being harmed as well before he even has due process, before he even has his day in court. This is an outrage. In Washington, D.C. today, I'm here, it's dark, it's cloudy, there's a, a cloud over it. It's, it's kind of evil, John, in a way, what's going on here, because even during the days when I ran Judicial Watch, now, of course, I run Freedom Watch, I never saw dishonesty to this extent. It's beyond mm. the pale. It's beyond imagination. Well, you know what they say about Washington, D.C., Larry? All the efficiency of a southern city with all the, uh, I guess, enjoyment of a, of a northern one. That's the joke. I think yeah. Candy was saying that. Uh, you were quoted in a Politico earlier this week as saying it's kind of cruel what's going on now, and the president should put these defendants out of their misery I think he should pardon everybody and pardon himself. You still feel that way with this new information, Larry? I do. One of the things I really love about this president, you know, and I haven't liked that many during my lifetime. I like Reagan. I think that was the last one. But he has courage. He does what he thinks right. He does it from his heart. He's not worried about appearances. That's the way I try to lead my, lead my life in terms of what I do, in terms of running Freedom Watch and wanting to be special counsel myself. You can't be afraid. Don't worry about the appearance. But these people are being persecuted. They're being destroyed. And like I said, Mueller doesn't even have the authority over many of them. And now we know about General Flynn. 
that apparently there's a lot of exculpatory Brady material that wasn't produced before he was forced to take a plea. Now, I don't know why his lawyer, uh, Joseph Kellner, got him into this, but I'll tell you something. Mike Flynn has a hell of a malpractice case because it appears that he was also uh, indicted and forced to plead guilty based on false evidence that was not uh, presented to him.